Welcome to Punky's World. <clears throat> this is going to be a genealogy video focused on what you can learn in newspapers. Uh, okay, I don't that one either. Anyway. Excuse me. I don't really need that either. I do need that, but not for this. Okay. <coughs> okay. My mother did a very nice job of Um, of putting together these articles, which I'm so grateful that I have in her handwriting, because I can actually read them. Um, February 17, 1911. James Delzell, who is at Hartford Hospital suffering with blood poisoning, was re reported yesterday as being somewhat improved, although it has been necessary to reopen the wound in his arm this week. Ooh. 4th of July, 1911. Wilson Gates of Enfield, Mass. is spending a few days at his home here, meaning in Connecticut. <coughs> May 29, 1925. Miss Jean Wilson, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Charles Wilson, will leave for Baltimore today, where she will attend the wedding of Mabel Gill and Roger Williams. Back in those days, they had a lot of this kind of stuff in the newspaper. <coughs> sort of what, what's called society news. They don't do this anymore. Um, April 30th, 1930, Comstock. In Elmers, New Jersey, April 14th, 1930, James Com Comstock, husband of, of Mary C. Reed, formerly of Broadbrook, burial will be held at Graveside in Windsorville. He died. Um, here's an interesting one. My father's uncle, William J. Wilson, of this place, and actually, I don't know why it said J. Oh, maybe that's supposed to be an F, because it is William F. Wilson. Um, and Mrs. Gladys M. Barney of Warehouse Point were married August 30th by Justice of the Peace, Leonard Grota. At Warehouse Point. <coughs> That's my father's aunt and uncle. Um, I mean, they just have so many interesting things. Like, we found my father's aunt going to New Jersey to spend time with family. This is another kind of thing that you can find through family members. We received this from a family member in the Wilson line. And this is my great grandfather's uh, brother's daughter, but he was already gone before she got married. But it was it was her wedding announcement by her mother, Sarah. Um, and this is my great grandfather's sister's obituary. Of course you expect to find obituaries. Which that can go in the those two things can go in the scrapbook. And let's see, what is this? This, oops, and this are both pages that were ready for the scrapbook. Okay. That one's already in. That one is not in. I'm going to pull it off of here. Oh, God, why didn't we use masking tape, Mom? There we go. Okay, and this is Marie Dalzell. The T.P. Holleran funeral home, huh? 
I'll have to see if I can find anything about them. And that's something that is very helpful. Just want to show you this as an example. This is an old funeral record. Okay. Um, <clears throat> these records have a lot of information. Things like you know the date of death, social security number, the what kind of casket they had, um, where they lived, who planned the funeral, who the clergy was, where the burial was, the date of birth, all kinds of things. Occupation. Um, so, and, and we've gotten many of these and they're usually free. So, that won't go in there. Okay, this I'm looking for Uncle Witter stuff, so I'm going to take this carefully. <laughs> what made us use masking tape, huh? Here's another marriage announcement. That over there is my mother's marriage announcement. Okay. Um, yeah, and I love the way my mother did this. She took the articles and wrote them out with the dates. This is when we were using um, Google Newspapers, I believe, before we got newspapers.com. So I have some, I do not want to rip the ever. I'm not even going to bother to take these off because I'm afraid I'm going to rip it. So, I'll leave them flipped. Over here. Um, because when I get the new scrapbook, we're going to put these in it. For sure. Ugh. So. And what I might do, oh, I want to put this in it as well. And this. I have to cut these out, but I'm sitting up here. What I want to do, because these are in my mother's handwriting, is pick out a couple of these to cut out and put in the new scrapbook. Um because I love the idea of having her handwriting in it. So, so we will go over the pros. Um, trying to think. They talked about who people went to visit and where. We found out that my, like I said, my great aunt Mabel went to visit family in New Jersey. Uh, what family in New Jersey? You know what I mean. Um, and I am gonna sit down today since I'm finishing early, and grab paper, and do what we talked about. <clears throat> ah. <laughs> and write down all the states that I have people. So we would do it like this. State. surname. My mother used to make forms like this all the time. <coughs> time period. Um, town or county. Remember, some states go by county. And this way, it's an easy way to look and say, okay, these are the places that I need to research. It's something like this, okay? 
We talked about it in the last uh, genealogy video. I'll make sure that that video is up in the cards. Um, so I'm going to start this, okay? State is going to be Massachusetts, okay? Now, yes, I have more than one surname in Massachusetts. So let's do surnames. I have Wilson. Hemingway. And Bordeaux. So, we come over here. And the time period for both is about the same. It's from about... 1873 to 1890, thereabouts. It may be further for the Bordeaux, so I'll just put a little plus sign. And the towns will be Enfield, Springfield, Bridge, South Bridge, and comma Douglas and Manchop. And then I do Vermont. Basically, it's Hemingway. From, oh god, probably the early 1800s to, I don't know, 1930 at least. Now, um, Okay, now the towns would be all B large H, Alberg. Okay, yeah, these need to go down here. Okay, Alberg, St. Albans, and then we move on to um, Connecticut. Now what you can do is you can just put the abbreviation for the state. That would save you room. The surnames in Connecticut are going to be Wilson, again Bordeaux, um, and all Wilson allied lines. So this is going to be from for the Wilsons is going to be from 1890 to present. For the Bordeaux, so I'm going to put W next to that. For the Bordeaux, it's going to be, ooh, I don't know, like 1850 to 1880, after my great grandmother was born. And you keep going like that. And that's kind of what you're doing to the best of your ability. So you know which states you need to concentrate in. Like I said, that is totally out of my own brain. Um, and I think my mother would have liked this particular form. Hello? Is this who? No, you have the wrong number. That's a dragon. Oh, that's why. I'm like, why am I only getting my missed call?
I had it set on mist and not, I had to slide it over to all. Anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, I'll obviously work on this. I need to make a better chart for this. I think I'll use a bigger piece of paper. And in our next genealogy video, I'll show you the next incarnation of this chart. Just trying to get an, a, a sense of where I need to go. <clears throat> so, I will see you for the um, Walmart food delivery and hopefully the junior delivery as well. Um, that one will be, that one will probably go up, yeah, that one will go up tomorrow. Um, but the Walmart delivery will go up today. It's kind of a race to see who comes in first, really. But anyway, I'll see you for whichever one comes in first. <laughs> so, and the other one will be on tomorrow. So thank you guys so much. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of your day. As I deal with my breathing issues. I can literally feel it when I try to breathe. It's tight. So, thank you guys. God bless you. Remember, we only need seven. I keep doing this wrong. Seven more to get to our goal of 100 subscribers by Christmas. We can do this. And thank you to the person who just subscribed. Mwah. Bye, guys. God bless you.